Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I started this channel to share my love of salmon flies and fly tying. I cover everything from spay flies to salmon flies to uh, artistic flies. I cover techniques. All my flies are step by step so that way you can follow along. I try to give as much detail and specifics as I can throughout the whole process. That way it's much easier to understand but you can also um, try out certain techniques and see certain things that I do. Um, if there's anything that you ever need to know um, or you have a specific question, by all means, shoot me a message. I'd be happy to make a video about it. Um, Mondays, I'll be doing material reviews, everything from all the different pheasants that we use to different hooks, um, different threads and silks, tinsels, and uh, more things that are used in salmon flies. So, if you guys enjoy the channel and you like a specific video, by all means, please uh, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, think about subscribing. That helps out the channel. It helps me out. And leave your notification bell on. That'll let you know when I post a new video, and you'll be able to follow along um, before anybody else. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get on with it. All right, everyone, so I'm sorry this is going to be a bit of a shorter video for a Monday, and it's not really a material video. It's, uh, it's one that was requested by a subscriber, though. Um, so, the subscriber wanted to know more about, like, what are the general um, ways to tie these and as far as placement of materials and, you know, what's the... Uh, just a an overall guideline of where to set your materials so this fly here is a green well and I want to use this as an example so when you're first tying um, as just a, a general rule of thumb that's what all of these are going to be they're not set in stone there's different variations and different ways of doing things but this is for those that are getting started and just a general idea of where to start um, your materials. So when you're starting with your tip and tag you want to line it up right with the gutter right here. The gutter is this point right underneath the barb. So line straight up with that and when you have your thread your thread should dangle and pass right by that um, gutter or val or barb valley and from there you start your tip which is typically two to three turns of tinsel and then if you're gonna do um, you know floss right here after the tip in your tag uh, typically that will end just shy of the hook point so when you tie in your butt your butt will end at the hook point Just like that. And the tail, when you typically tie the tail in, depending on the size of the hook, uh, for the most part you want your tail to be one and a half times the hook gap. So if your hook gap is, let's see, what we'll do here, we'll measure this really quick for you. So that hook gap is about three quarters of an inch. Let me double check that. Now we're going to call that five eighths. So one and a half times that. So you're going to be at about just about an inch and an eighth to an inch and a quarter so when you measure your um, your tail you want to tie it in at the point that would make it that length that in itself will help set you up for your wing if your tail is too long 
and your wing will be too long and likely too high because if your tail is too long your tail will sit much higher it'll sit kind of up here and that'll direct your wing in the same direction um, which will kind of give it an awkward look it'll separate and create uh, it'll separate the body and the wing more and that's going to create a huge um, gap right here so you want to try to avoid that by getting yourself the proper length tail now also keep in mind this is for married wing flies which is you know kind of a newer more uh, modern style of tying a lot of people when they get into salmon flies this is the reason they get into them at first is for the beautiful uh, married wings that we see um, but then once you start to learn those then you can start diving into mixed wings and some of the other really true classics now as far as the body um, for your tinsel I always want to start your tinsel on the quartering away side from where you're tying just a little bit on the other side of the hook shank that way when you're presenting it as you can see you don't see the start of it it just gives it a cleaner look gives it a little bit of a better look um, and your hackle hackle you can tie in there depending on the recipe you can tie it in here or sometimes the, the recipe will say two turns um, so when they say two turns, uh, that's two turns of tinsel. So, you know, if they say tie it in at the second turn, uh, which some of the doctors are like that, um, you'll kind of do a, a mock-up, and when you tie your tinsel in, do two wraps of it, or three wraps, just to get an idea of your spacing, and then where your second turn is, you tie it in right at the very top of the hook right up here whereas if you're starting back here at the butt you tie in down underneath right next to the tinsel um, and then when you go ahead to once you've got your tinsel and your hackle tied in you can um, kind of tuck that away behind the vise and get your floss in or seals fur or whatever you like um, this one is just solid color where, but some others are split 50-50. But one thing to remember is if it, the recipe calls for 50-50, you actually want to make it more like a 60-40 with 40 being in the rear. Reason being is if you do an even 50-50, you're going to wind up splitting your body somewhere around here. And as you can see, that leaves the back looking longer and not much in the front. The front is part of the front gets covered by your throat and wing, and um, that makes it look a little off balance. So if it's a 50-50, you want to actually do it 40-60. So 40 in the rear, 60 in the front, and that'll give you a more even-looking body. Uh, same goes for seals fur. Uh, if it says you know 50-50, do it 40-60. Um, trust me, it'll look much better. So once you get that tied in, then you've got your throat. Now, when you're tying all of these in, you got to remember that you do have, you know, you need a little bit of space for the head. Now, this head's a little on the large side, um, but, you know, this smaller head can come with time, but it doesn't look terrible this way. Um, you just always want to leave yourself a little bit of room. In this case, I think I left myself a little too much room and tied in everything right about here and then created the head so you want to stop mm, somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter inch or so away from the end of the hook the end right here and that'll give you a nice spot to uh, start your head with now the underwing uh, underwing goes in right on top it's the first thing that goes in um, after your throat now this underwing is white tip turkey so as you can see uh, it goes all the way back and actually blends with the wing and that's how you want your underwing for this with a with a feather wing like this uh, you want your underwing to make a smooth transition with the rest of the main wing 
getting this one a lot of sorts here. Uh, that'll give it a much better look, and that'll also fill in this gap down here. Uh, on flies that require um, tippets, the tippet, it's a newer style of doing it, but the tippet would line up. The second bar would line up right here with the butt. Now, typically, you know, if you talk to some of the older guys, some of the guys that know the older classics, the way they were actually designed um, is, holy moly, they were actually designed to be the tippets a little bit longer, so that way it fills in this gap better. Um, so as you get into the older flies, you'll realize that that barring does not need to line up with the tippet. But on some of these newer, uh, like Price Tanit, um, his a lot of his flies tend to be that way. Um, Mike Radintich, um, um Paul Jorgensen, you know, a lot of the more modern guys, um, they were the ones that kind of pioneered all of that. Uh, though there is some go, some mixed wings going back to Kelson. Or married wings, excuse me. So, anyways, uh, underwings, for now, as, like I said, a general rule of thumb, um, line up that second bar of your tippet here, so that way the edge uh, barring of the tippet lines up about back here. And you always want to try to choose a tippet that fits the fly. You don't want to take a gigantic tippet and then try to shorten it down. Pick a tippet that is... You're going to tie in mainly right by the stem, at the base of the stem. You don't want to be outside of that whitish area on the feather. Um, now, with the main wing, and you tie that in over your underwing, um, the main wing you want to have come in almost meet the tail or meet the tip of the tail. That will give you um, less of a gap here. And it looks a little bit cleaner, as you, as you can see. When you get into some of the older flies, you'll realize that guys like Blacker, uh, William Blacker, used to have tails that were much, much longer, and the wings would still be about this size. Um, that was just his style. That was how he did things. Um, so, but again, general rule of thumb, meet the tip of the wing with the tail for now, and that'll get you... Um, really nice looking wing um, sides and cheeks in this case the sides are wood duck teal and um, jungle cock so you put the jungle cock in first um, lay that right on the side and you want that to reach about the butt um, there's a lot of guys I see you know they tie their jungle cock in back here or here it's just a little bit too short they were really designed to reach farther back uh, same thing with the sides. The sides, uh, your wood duck and teal, should reach um, the butt or a little bit further. And of course the same thing goes with the mallard. Uh, that mallard roof, um, you want to have just about over your tag. And that'll just give it the desired look. Uh, the next thing that you would tie in would be your topping. Now one thing to remember is that the topping is actually part of the wing. That's how they were designed. Is If you look at a lot of the recipes, topping is not separate in the recipe. Um, it's actually added in to the, ma the materials needed for the wing. So keep that in mind and that's why you always want to try to have it hug the wing as much as you can. Uh, this one, as you can see right here, it sits a little bit high, but not terrible. Um, and it is a little shade longer than the wing, but that's okay. But you do want to have that, uh, the tip of the topping, very close to, or if not even with the edge of the, the back edge of the wing. Come on, this one horn wants to just be a pain. Doesn't want to sit right. All right, so next is your horns. Now, horns are a little bit different. Um, as you can see, I keep them so they come back here. And right before the end of the wing, they crisscross right over the top. As you can see, right there is where they crisscross. 
Um, not everybody likes that. Uh, some people like them to come off evenly on each side, so they stick away from each other and they just kind of shoot out. Uh, there's also the quote-unquote bug antenna type look where the horns will actually curve up and over the topping. That is a nice look. I do like it, but I do myself prefer the uh, horns to crisscross in this manner. That's just my style. That's how I like it. And then you come down to your head. Uh, once you've got all your materials tied in there, you can trim them down a little bit as you work on the other ones. Um, but the head, you can form relatively easily. Uh, once these are tied down good, use a very sharp razor blade and cut as close to the thread as you can without actually cutting the thread. Um, and it, once you've cut that, use a bit of Salire Clear and kind of solidify everything right there so none of it really moves around. Then with your thread, take some wax. And what I like to do is heat up the wax to the point that it's goopy and gets nice and thick on the thread. And then you can wrap that around the head and wrap it at an angle around this part where that cutoff stump is. And very slowly wrap a couple times there, a couple times over the top. And as you wrap more and more towards the top, you can use your thumbnail to push it all in and shape it. So that way you get a nice rounded shape. Um, and then use another coat of Salire Clear and make sure that you get it on the gut. Um, I don't think I did it on this one, on this fly. And what happens is the black Salire will actually leach into the gut or leach into the feathers. So you want to have the Salire Clear there first. Let that leach into whatever it wants to. It's clear, you're not going to see it. But once you put the Salire Black on, it actually will not leach because the clear already has. Uh, and that will give you your finished fly product. Um, so for now, uh, I think that's all I've got for you today. Um, if I missed anything or there's any other questions about this, um, you know, please feel free to send me a message. Uh, I will do another one on uh, whole feather wings. Uh, and then, again, I'll do another one on mixed wings, on positioning of things. And um, maybe I'll even uh, show you guys some blacker flies and how they uh, differ from these more modern style flies. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please uh, think about subscribing. That really helps out the channel. Um, you know, it helps me out, lets me know I'm doing a good job. It makes me want to keep creating more and more content. Um, which... In all reality, I really love just doing it anyways for you. Um, it's just a lot of fun uh, sharing this craft with all of all of you that, you know, we all have something in common. And, um, you know, it's something that we all enjoy. So, uh, all that being said, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day uh, and a wonderful week. I will try to get another video out towards the end of the week, um, but I'll be away for the next couple of days. So, uh, take care, happy tying, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.